So today I'm going to have an assistant here that's probably going to be following me around while I make this quick video. Hey everyone, so when you purchase a new fifth wheel, you often have an option to have it include an auto leveling system, which is a six way either hydraulic or electric jack system that will automatically level your RV front and back and side to side if you're in an uneven park. The product that I'm going to review today is for those of us who don't have an auto leveling system. We opted against it for a couple reasons. It was an option on our coachman and we could have ordered one with it, but the reason why we opted against it was because we had just recently watched several, several other videos and met several people who have had problems with their auto leveling system. And it can really put you in a really bad spot if you have any type of failure of that system, especially the control module. So what we chose to do was to opt against having the auto leveling system. Um, we have no problem, you know, getting out, putting some boards under one side of it to level it. And most of the parks we stay at are pretty level, but we did want a system that made setting up easier. So I ordered this Revo leveler. And essentially what this is, is a really cool gadget that helps you level out your travel trailer or fifth wheel if you don't have an auto leveling system. Now the way that it works is you calibrate it when the trailer is level, after you've already set it up and you're level front to back, side to side. And then you save those settings. Once those settings are saved, it knows when you go to another spot that's unlevel where it should be and what level should look like. Now it comes with two of these little mounting clamps, they're called nests, and you can put one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. I position them on the same side since I had two of them, just in two different areas. That way I can get two readings if I want to move it, or for some reason one of the mounts falls off. Now the way it slides in, it uses these little metal channel grooves which simply dock into it, and it slides and locks in place. Now because we've already calibrated it, and again, the calibration process is to simply make sure that your travel trailer or RV is level, and then you essentially save those settings in the actual Revo leveler. Now, because this does show your readings from one side, when you have an arrow and you're, you're trying to get set up left to right or your side to side leveling, it's telling you what side of the trailer needs to be lifted or lowered in order for it to be level. So if you have an arrow pointing up when you're doing your side to side measurement, that simply means you need to put blocks on the driver's side because you need to raise this side of the trailer. If you have an arrow pointing down, it means you need to put blocks on the passenger side because you need to lower this side of the trailer, or not necessarily lower, but you need to raise the other side of the trailer in order to have a level stance. So to power on the device, you're simply gonna hit the power button down here. It'll actually read out your battery level, and in my case, it's 100%. And then to determine if your trailer needs to move up or down on either side, you're simply going to hit your left, right level button. It's going to give you some question marks here. You hit it again, and then it will do a calibration. It will tell you specifically how you need to adjust this side of your RV. You'll see an arrow appear here in a second. So it's telling me that the driver's side of my RV needs to come down 0.7 inches. And the way to accommodate that is to raise the other side 0.7 inches. So if I put a board that's approximately three quarters of an inch under the passenger side tires, it will lower this side and it will give me perfect level. Once it's level, you'll actually see dual arrows appear. So now that I've backed over a board that's perfectly level, you'll see that I've actually positioned the trailer correctly with both arrows appearing solid, and that simply means that the trailer is now level. So the next setting would be your disconnect setting. Your disconnect setting indicates how high the trailer needs to be in order to be disconnected from your truck. So once you disconnect the trailer and you save that disconnect setting, you pull away and it remembers that that's how high the front of your trailer was during disconnect. So when it's time to reconnect my trailer, I'm gonna to go to the connect feature and the connect feature will give me arrows telling me how far up or down I need to position the front of the trailer until it's perfect height for reconnecting the truck. Typically, to reconnect the truck, you'd back the truck up and then you'd make slight corrections in order to perfectly hitch up your fifth wheel, or if it's a travel trailer, your ball. In this case, this remembers the height that your trailer or fifth wheel was at when you disconnected, and it allows you to raise or lower your trailer back to that point for easier reconnection. 
So as you can see with the little bubble level I have here, my trailer is slightly positioned up in the front, and that's because it's hitched to the truck. What you can see the rebel leveler telling me is that I need to move it down to level the truck out, which is absolutely right. When this was set up, it was set up with the, the trailer perfectly level, so in order for me to level out the front and the back, it's telling me that I need to lower the front jacks of the trailer, and that will position me perfectly. So now we've repositioned the trailer and both arrows are now solid, indicating that the trailer is perfectly lined up front to back. One nice thing about the Revel Leveler, it is designed so when you're in the cab of your truck, it's easy enough for you to see the arrows. And if you're positioning it side to side and you need to level it, you can actually tell when you've backed up over your leveling blocks enough for it to equal out and show that you're level. Now I would like to point out some things that I think could be improved about the product. First of all, because of the display it uses, it's very difficult to see when it's bright outside. So earlier in the day when we were first testing it out, I couldn't even see the numbers or the readout on this screen because they were washed out by the sun. And you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like now. The reason why I did this review when it was a little darker outside is because it's easier to see. And I may include a little footage of what it looked like in the sun just so you get an idea of how washed out it was. That being said, the top and bottom arrows are very visible. They were very bright and easy to see. So the arrows that actually helped position you were extremely easy to read, but the actual numbers that told you specifically the spacing blocks that you would need on either side were a little difficult and harder to read. It does come with this nifty screen here, and this is just designed to protect the case of the actual Revo Leveler itself. It's kind of a UV sunscreen. So we just took our first trip with our RV and the new Saloon tires. They performed flawlessly. They're a little dirty right now because we had to pull through a little bit of a ditch to get out of a parking spot we were at. Rode perfectly. I can honestly say, I don't know if a lot of people claim they can tell the difference in how a trailer pulls with different tires on it, but I couldn't really tell the difference. Uh, the trailer pulled fine. My confidence, though, was much higher than it had been with the other tires, even though they were relatively new. I still feared at any moment I'd have some type of a catastrophic tire failure, and I was really concerned about that. So it was really nice to know that you feel better about towing with these tires. So while we're here with the fifth wheel, I wanted to mention a few things that we've done and a few reasons why we got this specific fifth wheel. First of all, it was right in the price range we were looking for. Um, more than anything, you want to make sure that you're getting the best components on a fifth wheel, especially for what you're paying. One of the things that really attracted us to this fifth wheel were its use of Dexter axles. But more than anything with the Dexter axles, this particular fifth wheel has 7,000 pound axles. And the reason why we wanted 7,000 pound axles is because the entire weight of the trailer, or the gross trailer weight, is 14,000 pounds. So by having 7,000 pound axles, both axles alone can support the entire gross trailer weight of this particular RV. In most cases, the axles combined equal about 80 to 90 percent of the weight of the trailer when loaded. And in our case, the axles are more than enough to support the entire weight of the trailer. So that was really nice. And the reason why most trailers have maybe 6,000 pound axles is because a portion of the weight's of course transferred to your tow vehicle generally about 15 to 20 percent. In our case, about 2,100 pounds transfers to the pin of our truck. So in reality, we really only needed 12,000 pound axles. But because, you know, our trailer had the option for 7,000 pound axles, we definitely lucked out by having a much higher rated axle on our trailer. Another thing to look out for is some type of a suspension system between your equalizers. So this particular piece right here, having that bushing in the center definitely helps and it smoothens out the ride as the trailer is going down the road and that's called the Dexter Easy Flex. Another reason why we really like this specific trailer is because it actually came with a bike rack that's frame mounted. Many trailers don't support bike racks and if you get a fifth wheel with a fiberglass back cap you generally don't have a way of transporting bikes on the exterior of your RV unless you attach them to maybe a rack that connects to your ladder. In our case we actually have this which supports up to 450 pounds and you know can really haul four or five bikes pretty easily. And again it's actually frame mounted which is really nice. We also added LED tail lights, much brighter, more intense, especially when it's dark outside. 
One of the most common accidents you can get in with an RV is when you're pulling out of an intersection and you're crossing the road, cars that are coming by might be coming too fast and they'll actually sideswipe your RV. In our case, I added these reflectors going down the side simply to add additional visibility for when we're pulling out of intersections. We also had ours optioned with the JT Strong Arm Kit. There are these braces that come down, then you tighten them with these little T-screws. And the reason why these help is once your landing gear are fully down, you lock those into place by tightening them, and you raise the RV up just slightly so it puts tension against them. And it really acts as a stabilizer for your RV when you're parked and people are walking around inside. You really don't get any more movement inside of the RV once those are down. And you can get those on fifth wheels with either automatic or manual leveling systems. As you've seen in multiple videos, we use a B&W companion hitch. This works specifically with the Ford Puck system. It is outstanding. We absolutely love this hitch. We travel with it all the time, and it gives us a really, really nice smooth ride. One of the reasons for it is if you see the cups right here, they actually sit on urethane bushings, and there is a bit of a hydraulic system underneath there that allows it to really move and oscillate with the trailer, and it provides a very, very steady, comfortable ride. Plus, the hitch is built exceptionally well. That's one of the big selling points of the B&W hitch is how they actually build their hitch and the type of steel they use in it. So something that's a little different than most people, I definitely like the look of frameless windows better than these traditional windows, but what's nice about these windows is that it still gives you the ability to open up your window completely to the outside. So when we slide one of these windows back, you actually have a screened window and the whole thing's actually open up to air. When you move to frameless windows, you simply have the ability to tilt them outwards and it doesn't give you that complete access to the air. And we actually like these windows a lot. I prefer the look of frameless windows though. If you're wondering what these are, these are called weep holes. These are made when condensation builds up on the inside. It actually pours out through these areas right here. And it keeps from getting water puddling up inside your window. Anyways, I just wanted to do a quick video. A few things on the RV while I had it here and hooked up. I hope you all enjoy. If you do, I'd appreciate it if you like my video and subscribe. Thank you.